the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you. More than money, more than power, more than faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. One more time. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. our love for you thank you for the privilege of access to light light that transforms light that builds light that changes Lord in the name of Jesus tonight we pray that you will help us we cry for the help of the spirit open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth grant us access to light that will change us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about, it was just an introduction. We ran through the course curriculum. What is all this on the screen? I thought we finished this whole Valentine thing. Please, let's get to work. No more distraction. It's time to concentrate. Psalm 35, verse 27. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Mm. I love you forever. I love you forever. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people information that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it, they will not value it, and it will not be profitable unto them. And I did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life, especially our finance. Number one, that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed. Hallelujah. You must see the need. You must see the evil of poverty. You must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of Christ and even to the agenda of God. I told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility. In fact, there is a whole book about recognition by Mike Murdoch. It's called The Law of Recognition recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you and then it creates dissatisfaction hallelujah and then the second point is that you go for knowledge haven't recognized that there is a need to be blessed you go for knowledge hallelujah and then number three you take action consistent application of the things that you've heard how many of us still remember all these things 
Praise God. I'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week. If you were not here, the messages are available. Please get it and listen, listen and listen again. I don't know how many times I've listened to last week's message. And um, we discussed the concept of prosperity. And I, I said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper. Remember? And it means what? To do well. Praise the Lord. To prosper means to possess a means, an ability, or power. Please, in this series, I want to be very, very slow, very straightforward. I don't want to bring any ambiguity. I just want us to get this as principle so that everyone will understand. Hallelujah. We don't just want a few people to understand. We want everybody to understand. It means to possess a means, an ability, or power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs may be. And remember, we discussed five areas of prosperity. Can you remember? Number one, spiritual prosperity. Number two, mental prosperity. Number three, bodily prosperity. That's the prosperity of your health. Number four, financial prosperity. Number five, so I told us that for many people, listen, every time they talk about prosperity, they think money. Hallelujah. Now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity. Now in the world system, they just say happiness, joy, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of that in business books, but everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. We said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind. How much your mind is well developed and deployed. Remember I stressed last week and I will stress it again. That Christianity does not make people fools. Are you getting my point? Christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned. Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of this system. You give illumination and you say you are the salt of the earth. You preserve and you add taste. You add value. So the church is relevant. Even in society. We are not just relevant as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up. And this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation, the church is not respected. They are not seeing our socioeconomic impact. They are not seeing us affect various strata of society. Hallelujah. I think I did a teaching there, Conquering Cosmos also. You can get the teaching where I told us that the gospel is not just a message. It's not just tract. It's an ideology. Taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence. Education, politics and governance, finance, um, religion, and media, arts, and so on and so forth. You can get the teaching. Hallelujah. So your ability to train your mind to build yourself and the ability to be free from worry and fear. How many of you know that there are so many people, they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering what if I die? All this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity. You can be rich financially and be poor mentally. Praise the Lord. Bible says the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind. Number three bodily prosperity 
we are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth to be prosperous health wise it means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity and then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness all of these yokes curses all kinds of things that people inherit hallelujah you can be free from it and when you are free from that you are prosperous bodily the fourth one and that's going to be the subject of our discussion is financial prosperity say financial prosperity it means freedom from poverty freedom from lack there is a difference between poverty and lack and today we are going to see it hallelujah poverty is a state of um, lack of productivity there is nothing you are doing completely and as a result of that you do not have the ability to add value whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is and then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing but lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency right so someone who suffers lack you have but it's always not enough always it's not like there is nothing it's just always not enough hallelujah so financial prosperity is freedom from poverty freedom from lack and take note you must write this and the effects that come with them there is an effect that poverty does to the life listen if poverty was neutral there will be no need to attack the issue of poverty are you getting what i'm saying that means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody it did nothing just neutral like the air we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty but we are we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives our families the society and the advancement of the kingdom at large hallelujah praise god It also means having abundant financial supplies. I'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it. If you do not have a means to replenish and sustain, you are not rich. It doesn't matter what you have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not enough to have abundant financial supply. Anybody can dash you money. Are you getting me now? Any well-wisher can love you and dash you money. You can inherit wealth, for instance. But the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it's our time we arise it's our season everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom. Having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love, to express care, to improve yourself, to share and to impact lives. You must have an opportunity to bless people. You must have an opportunity to interact, to 
be a blessing to people. There are many people who are financially prosperous, but relationally they are very poor. They walk alone, they have no friend, nobody to bless. Nobody can say it's because of this person I was blessed today. Hallelujah. So that kind of money, that kind of blessing, that at the end of the journey of your life, please bring some more people. If there are more people, they can just come and sit. At least they can leave the front rows. They can just share maybe a few of them. Or a few of you, some of the leaders, your leaders, you can just go there so that some people can come to the front. Hallelujah. Few people who have the opportunity, please come and sit down. Praise God. How many of you, lift, please look at me. How many of you have seen people who you know, maybe in their lifetime, maybe now they're in their old age, they were blessed, but they didn't lift anybody? Have you seen people like that? They didn't bless anybody. Nobody went to school because of them. They didn't feed anybody. They didn't help the poor. There are people like that. And so maybe while they were working, nobody got a job because of them. They didn't bless anybody. Some of them were politicians. Their environments were not developed. And these people come down and in their old age, they are left alone. Because they did not invest in the life of anyone. Relational prosperity is so important. Because by and large in your life, that's one of the things that will matter. Are you getting me? There are some people who will never be poor in this life because of the, those who have been raised and lifted because of them. Hallelujah. For instance, my children will never suffer in this life again. You see that? Whatever price I have paid for them, even if you hate me, you will love them. One day you will just look at them. I'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl. You know all this kind of solidarity, whether she's qualified or not. See, there are, you can create a, a platform for generational blessings. Look at what we inherited from our parents. Praise God. They didn't do anything. They just produced enemies. And you just got up and your uncle said, you are the son of who? You say, I'm the son of this person. You say, that's right. Because of something that happened when you were not there. That means relationships matter. Are you getting my message now? Your, your quality of relationship with... There are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship. Hallelujah. Some of us, because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now, you may never need to pay for certain things in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One day someone will come to a showroom to buy the car and maybe it's Ken that is the owner of the showroom. Ah! Sam, I remember you. He said, come in. The inner one, not that one outside. There is the inner one, the holy, the holy of holies. And he says, please, pick anyone. He says, see, it's been a while. And Sam is so blessed that when he takes it, he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed. So it's not a product of insufficiency. There is a realm like that. Poor people never know there is a realm like that, but there is. Hallelujah. So as you're sitting down right now, I want you to imagine your two, three, four, five children standing and saying, Daddy, you better hear what they are saying. We are coming. <laughs> the day is Valentine. Love. Love means responsibility. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your children look at you one day and say, what happened? Is it that you didn't hear what others were? What happened? And you know, we are preserving all these messages. In the future, they will play it and you will see yourself when you were small. Your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things. Eventually, we said, this, your story is not connecting. You know? Why are we still suffering like this? <laughs> Parents, we're sorry. 
relational prosperity. Now look at me. For those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships, I'm just, this is not a discussion, but I just feel it's important I point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people. You are not as fine as me. You don't speak English as me. You are not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You are wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. That sister you see sitting down, she may have only one dress, but there is something happening inside her. The Bible says the vision in the end, it said, do it, tarries. It will not speak at the beginning, but in the end, it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his share. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem. And you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and said, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? relationships and they brought a crippled man who dashed monkey banana who would take that crippled man to the to the palace relationships everybody say relationships relationships can give you what money may not give you there are people on account of relationships they got jobs without interview you've been seeing your roommate because they are humble you don't know who their father is you're just speaking against everybody and feeling you're this and that and one day you may go to their house and find somebody there that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men, the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him? That is coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand. I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look. And say all kinds of things. No. Value people now. Especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too. Look, let me tell you. The word can give you an inheritance. Never conclude on any man who is getting revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
there are many wealthy people today there are people in the presidency there are multi bill gates had classmates true or false all of these wealthy people had classmates some of those classmates are still begging today and bill gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them they are giving millions to charity can they help their friends neglect this is a message to someone this night today's valentine's day let me just press it in some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have love people when you see us say turn around hug one another and all of this we're doing it for a reason we're doing it for a reason everybody say opportunity remember my message on activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships i'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship no the bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness unfruitful that means it doesn't bear fruit there are some relationships that bear fruit hallelujah it doesn't mean the people have to be perfect i'm not talking of love relationship now i'm just talking of general relationship the people may have their differences just like you have your own too correct people are not working with us because we are perfect there are some of you who hate me it's just that you like what i represent to the body and you are receiving it in peace praise the lord value relationships write it write it so that even after 10 years if you're looking at your notes you will see it. value relationships when you see people greet them greet them don't say i'm a pastor of so 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 ministry so what huh greet people you get up in the morning you pass people good morning huh don't look and say you know when i was in 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 ss3 that's when you were writing common interest so what let me tell you if age used to give food some of our parents will be resting by now relationships hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear 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 number two insecurity many poor people are insecure the bible says money is a defense it says a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended but a poor man uses entreaties always begging a life of begging greed many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion greed what if I give? Where would the money come from again? So someone can be dying and you can join people to say, ah, you are dying, what happened? Whereas you can rush the person to the hospital. But you are saying, me too, what I have is not much. Greed. Self-centeredness. Some of the effects that financial hardship brings. Self-centeredness many people are self-centered and part of the reason not all of the reason but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency self-centered they don't think about anybody just me myself what i have is not much you know if it was much we would have shared but now that is more please don't disturb me i can pray for you self-centeredness unrighteousness unrighteousness Many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money. 
They've entered wrong relationships, wrong marriages. They have compromised, given themselves freely and cheaply. They've been involved in diabolic things, all kinds of things because of poverty. When you pay a man and say, go and kill another person and I will give you 100,000 or 200,000. That's terrible. Unrighteousness. Say in the name of Jesus. I will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things. Yeah. There are many people who live perpetually under fear. Will the landlord come and kick me out? And we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like Abuja. And now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of God's economic system. Mm. Grant us light, oh God. The anatomy of God's economic system. The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery. It's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation and so tonight we want to examine this system everybody say heaven's economy say it again heaven's economy many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity it is carnality but by now i know that every one of us here hates poverty is that true and we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine 
is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why does god bless this is this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy don't talk about money don't talk about business don't talk about all of these things the first thing you need to know is why does god bless the believer why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom what is the role of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him there is a system so why does god bless us because if you do not know why god prospers people you will misuse prosperity when it comes are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity they don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom so they get money and do lots of crazy things you know i i i told you i think it was last week i don't know if i said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat any one of them hallelujah i watched a documentary how that the son of the sultan of brunel or so i think one of these very wealthy billionaires hallelujah his child i think if i if i remember rightly about 22 years old when he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift The wealthiest man of God in Africa is worth about 190 million US dollars after years of operating this world. But now one son who clocked 22 years. Listen to me. I want to challenge you tonight. The father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family. Will he buy food in a restaurant? A man whose empire is built with gold. And the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht. And he brought in half of Hollywood stars. Half. Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy. Drink beer. Waste away. Become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular. One of these secular musicians. And he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man a poor man uses entreaties and he knew that that way would not work so they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend do you think it will work at once at once it worked at once now listen that's a lot of money spent on vanity and the truth is compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had that's a chicken change that's pocket money are you getting what i'm saying don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system there are, of course any man that does not give his life to christ no matter what you have in this world you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom you must be advancing another cause everybody's advancing something whether you know it or not are you getting my point so why does god bless us never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion the day you forget it god is not entitled to bless you please follow me because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict your violation of them will cost you so much number one the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one to live a comfortable life i shared this during the kingdom wealth summit in 2010 number one to live a comfortable life that's one of the reasons why god blesses us in the kingdom let me say it again god is not glorified in our poverty say it after me god is not glorified when i'm poor 
Say one more time. God is not glorified when I am poor. Now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated, that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity. Don't just clap. Oh. Many clapped. Many clapped like this. This is not to make you fantasize. What is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks, I don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad. Hallelujah. What is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools? Good schools with very good standard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong. Living a very comfortable life. You sleep in peace. You wake up in peace. God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. I want you to believe it. No matter how you have suffered, say, it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose and in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God, one of the major reasons as a matter of fact, why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation, but when you are a kingdom citizen, if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion, then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of, of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people. To better the lives of people. Hallelujah. Very important. Now I wrote something here and I want you to write it. It's God's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. I'll say it again. It is God's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. This is so important. I know that there are kingdom financiers. Those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities. But can I tell you, part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom. Say amen if you believe that. So financial dominion is not a wish. I told you it's a, it's a principle. It's a path. It has a formula. If you can work with it, 
then God will honor you. Otherwise, you are not entitled. As simple as that. You may not go to hell, but you are certainly not going to be eligible. It is God's plan for every believer. It's God's desire for everyone seated and hearing me and even for the online community. It's God's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom. Listen, we are still going to discuss other sections, but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource God gives you, there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom. It's not just a special um, a, un, until you are prompted and all of that, that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. That's the second reason. The third reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a practical way. To reveal the love of God and God so loved the world that he that you must give your love expression in this dying world. To reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way. To help the poor, to help the hungry, to be committed in charity, to be committed in community projects and nation building. All of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom. That means God's blessings is not just limited to the house of God. First the house of God but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love. I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion, beyond culture, beyond gender, and beyond social status. When you come and build a school for a community, for instance, and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years, teach these children, whether you know them or not, that's revealing the love of God. When there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy, you provide for the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. How do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich? And maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now and he says, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, say, who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, say, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he'll say, ah, you out of this abundance, so let's just take this one. And you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously. So the Bible says when you give to the poor, it's the same thing as God saying, borrow me money. I will return it to you. Ah, I will do. Goodness. God, every rich man blesses according to his ability. That means he first looks at his ability. And from that revelation, he will bless you. So the Bible says, my God, this is Paul speaking, shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance, advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. It says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know, listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. 
But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that it can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money to build an idol. The gold and everything. Eventually, they built an idol. That's what a lot of people are doing. Every time you do not know why God blesses, you will build an idol with it. Are you following me, please? This is a very important teaching. I want you to pay rapt attention. So God blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one, what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them according to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down, stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down, stewardship. This is, this is, this is, a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom. There are no owners of prosperity as it were, financial prosperity. No. No. There are stewards that God commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing. The day you stop being a steward, you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom. Everybody say, I am a steward. What does it mean to be a steward? A caretaker. A caretaker. That means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy. Worthy enough that God can recommend you and can trust you. There are some people who will never be rich. No matter how much they pray and fast. Even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out. You know why? They are not trustworthy. In this day and age, let me tell you. In this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer. God is looking for distribution channels. God is looking for houses. Men he can trust. That you say, Lord, you know, I, I told God something. I said, Lord, I know that many people have given in the kingdom. But I want you to trust me and see what I will do for your kingdom. And I mean it. I'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity. Because there are many of us that until now, all we are thinking about is just ourselves. Let me make quick money. Hammer sharp sharp. Marry one lady quickly. Have children. Build a house. Enjoy my life. And go back to the village by December. And say all you suffering ones, how far God has been faithful. If that is your mindset, forget about kingdom wealth. Forget about kingdom wealth. That you know that Lord, I'm a distribution center. Trust me. Trust me with insight. Trust me with resources. Trust me with capacity. He gave out of trust. He gave one five talent. That means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well. Then the one with two and the one with one. And after a while, his point was proven to be correct. Because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it. The one with ten multiplied it and it collected. You see, I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. 
those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God. In this country, there are believers with houses, estates, and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom. They are not doing anything for the kingdom. Only to get angry and talk, fly around a church is saying we have a convention. And maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million. And that man is paying business class 2.5, right? First class 2.5. And in one week, he would travel four or five countries, spend more than 10 or 15 million, and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching. When you do not take up kingdom responsibility, you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. Are you, are you getting something right now? Greed, self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion. Are you getting blessed? Many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed. We are self-centered. There is nothing, the kingdom, I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom. There are many of us here, where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom. I'm not talking about offering. Offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something. Do you have the kingdom at heart? David sat down and thought to himself, he said, how can I be in a royal palace made of gold? There is nothing I want and my God does not have a place. He said, although you, you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You do not need a house, but me, I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 14 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people so that when you see a man that god is blessing don't be angry there is a price they have paid and it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you understanding what i'm saying this is a reorientation when the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom notice i've not mentioned anything business I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just buy cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh-uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money 
Let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you, it's your season. In the name of Jesus. What kept your family members will not keep you. There are some of us, this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say, Lord, will a Savior not arise? Will a Savior not arise? Is this how we will die? Will a savior not arise? Many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families. The Lord brings salvation for us in the name of Jesus Christ. While they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw them, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9. One to read. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you. No matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house, I will seek your prosperity. What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and is still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ? and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrosis until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels the man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer. And there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth? That can give a prostitute 10 million for one night. Dollars. I'm not talking of Naira. And it does not shake them. All these rich men go for extravagant outings. And buy one wine. One. One wine. About maybe 10 or 20 or 50 thousand dollars. One wine. And they will order cartons of it. And believers are here begging. Please. Begging. Psalm 22 verse 5. Give 22 dollars. 5 cents. All these kinds of suffering. Something is wrong. It's not, listen, we are not mocking them, but I believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen. You better believe it. I believe strongly that this generation 
will do something. We are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill. And they will see how we are so separated from the blessing. Are you getting blessed? Forbes 100 billionaires, the top 100 people in the whole world, they are just about maybe five or six people who are professing believers. And that's the Walton family, Sam Walton and all the other people. Most of the other people are atheists, heterogeneous religions coming from wherever. Where is the church in this? Members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that. There is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, perpetual misuse of his blessings Hosea chapter 4 verse 7 is someone getting blessed tonight you will thank God for this truth that you are hearing blessed are the ears that are hearing this don't trivialize it at all hallelujah everybody read want to read as they were increased so they sinned against me Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably... Listen, there are some things that are not caused by demons. It's how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything that in such that insatiable lust for just everything money is a wild animal it can tear you into pieces if you don't control it that's why the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them hallelujah people make all kinds of nasty statements people say all kinds of things because they believe they have money they can hire police they can do all kinds of things Praise the Lord. I want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you're already in, in a very great, a, a landslide uh, progression towards Financial prosperity. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Now please pay attention. We'll start talking about the laws now. We've seen why God blesses us. We want to see how he blesses us. Spiritual laws. Remember in our course curriculum, when I read it for you last week. Sorry for those who didn't come last week. We, we read out a course curriculum. Just, just follow. We're really sorry. I forgot to read it. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Even so, come Yeshua, come. And even so, come take your bride away. Take us into new realms, oh God. How my soul longs to see your face my lord even so even so
come Yeshua come what are the laws there are spiritual laws brothers and sisters that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom every herbalist look at me if you see this brother today come my brother if by next week koinonia this guy just comes with a what range rover sports maybe or whatever it is just just keep down and let's let's hurry up praise god and he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything you can just look at him and say my brother in one week where did you go to you won't ask him what he did you say where did you go to somehow we associate wealth with the spirit realm once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth they say no way leave this guy's money this guy went somewhere not he did something he went somewhere so we and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine is that true so if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich it tells you that there are spiritual laws hallelujah bless you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 please deuteronomy 28 verse 1 this was a condition for prosperity and it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? observe and do there is something to do there are laws to live by it's not automatic it's not the issue of receive prosperity there is a dimension where prayer comes in but I want you to know that there are laws. Everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Say one more time. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say spiritual laws. Oh, there are laws. There are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27, verse 30. Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One to read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says, All the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth it is a tenth ten percent of your income please write ten percent of whatever blessing god br brings to your life now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance money currency because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say, this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'm going to say something that 
sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it, but that's not... The Bible says obedience is better than... There are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, I'm, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues we are going to discuss that but listen i'm telling you now your tithe is your 10 percent. there is a reason why god said 10 he would have said two or you would have said 21 to 50 percent is your tithe choose anyone he, god is very meticulous and he's exact 10 percent is your tithe are you getting what i'm saying now malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 Another word for the law of Titan is the law of open heavens. It's the spiritual law. One of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens. Not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question, but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God many robbers of God and please listen some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money let me say something everybody is an authority somewhere are you getting what I'm saying a professor is an authority in his field not everywhere don't listen to garbages by intellectuals they are not spiritual people they don't know how heaven's economy works you cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man and you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people because a man is sound intellectually does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge and they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand this is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ. Being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. I know that there are abuses here and there. But let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty. Scripturally. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge... The serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike. Are you listening to me, please? So beware. There are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand, 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is a consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I will begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify. They will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you of your financial prosperity the first thing that happens is that many believers say if i give where will i get another one question how did the first one come your tithing is a proof of trust hallelujah if you cannot bring out 10 percent of your money and say lord i trust you i come because i love you and i come because i know that your word is true if you're not a faithful tither don't get angry at god many of our parents get angry maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God, and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. 
they've been trying to build one house for 10 years 20 years when the house is almost completed somebody will do something from the village everything will be destroyed again the moment have you seen families like that the moment money enters everybody gets sick until the last time finishes then everybody will be fine by themselves that's the devourer brothers and sisters that's the devourer there is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom you can choose to believe what i'm saying hallelujah could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings some of us go and tell our parents these things in love there are some of us here that are parents we have children we've not been practicing the law of tithing i want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws even unbelievers give 10 percent they don't call it tight but almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10 percent of their money and they say it's for charity are you following me now if a believer plants during dry season there is every tendency that you still suffer although he's a believer is that true if an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings this is how lots of unbelievers they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them tonight god is giving you an opportunity to make a decision hallelujah was he going to continue but while you are seated in the next two minutes i want you to pray and say lord grace i've not been a faithful titan don't bow your head pray pray open your mouth and pray there are many of us some of you outside wherever you are please this is the this is a serious business your children this this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now five years from now you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family some of us as you are hearing this right now you may be young but god is counting on you to break some chains enough is enough pay the price now pay the price now lift your voice and pray and say lord grace say kata ba -ba 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 -ba. i have robbed you and i am sorry I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. Cry for grace, grace, oh God. From today, I make up my mind that I will be a faithful tighter, not out of fear, not out of religion, but out of revelation. I see that this is a key. I will teach my children how to tight. I will teach my workers how to tight. I will teach my family members to tight. I will guide them and help them. To be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say lord i'm ready to comply god is more than able before you begin to abuse god and insult him and say he's not helping my family i'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes Business without tithing will end up in failure. Ministry without tithing will end up in failure. A corporation without tithing, a, a non-tithing family, are, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on tithing. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing 
does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him. And said, blessed be Abraham, son of the most high, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, there is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that he's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the title of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million? And just go and give like that. We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. The giving grace. There are many people that do not have. If you don't have. It is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of God. And just go and drop. No. There is a grace. That was the grace that was upon the Macedonian church. That they gave even beyond their limits. It's called the giving grace. Many of us do not have it. We are too greedy. Everything that enters your hand, you spend it on every kind of thing. Sickness, disease, any other thing but God. Hallelujah. Your tithe. What is the storehouse? Very quickly, let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all. What is the storehouse? Because the Bible says, bring the tithe where? To the storehouse. The house of God. So what is the storehouse really? In scripture, there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse. Number one, God's first idea of a storehouse from the Bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Are you getting me? The place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment. For many people, is their local assemblies because, you know, they are there, they are committed, they are workers in the church, and then they are giving. Number one, the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment. Primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life. That becomes the storehouse. Number two, it could be a ministry. Not necessarily your ministry, but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom. Please get this. A ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom. There are people, for instance, that sow in their tithe into maybe Benihin ministry, Kenneth Copeland ministry, and it's not their local assembly as it were. Are you getting my point now? But it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning, building and equipping believers. Listen. If you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening, it can affect your harvest. It's in the Bible. It's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive. The, the seed will not produce, not because it is not good, but a poor soil killed it. Number three. Now, and these ones are, they are special situations, but I'm going to talk to you. The vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual. 
a man of God, listen please, I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what I'm saying. A, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this tithe. They don't just go maybe to redeem or Kenneth Copeland. That vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people. Are you getting my condition now? And they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings. Abraham went to who? Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not a city. He was a man. And he brought his tithe to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him. Hallelujah. There are lots of ministries, for instance, around that by the grace of God look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves they come and they tighten koinonia here. I don't even know. This is what they are doing. Are you getting me? But I'm saying whether of these three, there are special conditions for the third to occur. Because there are many men of God who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say, I qualify to be the storehouse. Come and bless. I've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse. But the house of God is where you must bless. Is somebody getting blessed? These are the benefits, the first law. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night. Next week, we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation, the principle. The second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase, the law of giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6 38. Everybody read. One to read. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that he met. Without it shall be measured unto you again. This is a spiritual law. Genesis 8.22, please. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible. While the earth remained, verse 21, 21 please. Let's start from 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. This was Noah's sacrifice. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. 22. While the earth. That means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. God joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working. Cold and and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped but from the day they gave birth to you till today the sun still rises sets according to our perspective here there is still cold and there is winter that means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work very very important what is the law of seed time and harvest really what is it 
simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith i'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what i'm saying this is a very powerful law that means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah it says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the Lord in the house of God, as much as God has blessed you, you should not come to the house of God empty handed. There is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of God. Please never give just because it's offering time and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira you return it 50 you return it 20 naira, even the 20, you return the new one and carry one. Say, Usher, oh, please, you just dump the thing there and say, Lord, at least you. So, no, 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 no. Let your heart be in what you are doing. When I finish teaching you these principles, you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why God can punish certain people when they open their mouth, castigating blessed people in the kingdom. Are you seeing now? You see that it's not child's play. There is what you must do. It's not cheap. It's not free. Offerings in the house of God. Number two. I call them kingdom investments. Your givings for the building of the Lord's house. Kingdom investments. Every other seed and commitment that you make. So that there will be a smooth running of 
the activities that happen around the house of God. I call them kingdom investments. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Kingdom investments. Not necessarily that maybe like project 10,000 like this. That could be, but you can sit on your own and say, Lord, I'm committing myself. God is blessing me. There is 50,000 coming in for me. Maybe 5,000 or 1,000. I'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments. This is for building of the Lord's house. This is between you and God. You see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, please and please, don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people? Satan doesn't want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be blessed. There are natural laws we are going to talk about. But your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws. Every unbeliever pastor, they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship. Is that true? Whether they are business people or whatever, once there is a project and they hear, sometimes even without anybody coming, they run because they understand the implication. I want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it. Commit yourself. Never be in a place and you don't find something. Let me tell you. See, eh? Years ago, I used to play the keyboard for a ministry. A man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. They were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to Obasanjo and all of that. Now they came and they started a ministry in Joss, Pastor. I used to go and play keyboard for them. Listen, nobody ever gave me one naira. Are you getting me? I would trek from my house. Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you reap where you sowed, it says you reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket. And I will go there, but I was doing it joyfully. God is my witness. I never complained once to say this man. It was even my parents that were saying, this, this, this boy is a small boy. What is all this one again? But I was doing it joyfully. But God was watching. This is what happened to David. While he was tending his fathership, God was seeing him and saying, I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd. Many of us, when you see certain people, you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives. There was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing, I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. 
when you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tithe of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tithe. It's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruit? In scripture, the concept of first fruit, it was ordained by God, it was practiced by the Jews, it was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have register, all the members, if you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is much. You have not dropped anything. They didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen. Is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is buffing compulsory? No. But not buffing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol. It's a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? First in your life. That when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to god and everything and all of that is it's not just about giving god money it's about telling god that you are first in my life are you getting the concept now so if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people serve very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit, it doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying, if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse to say sam i'm waiting for your first fruit if by next week you don't bring it upon this altar i will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. please don't let anybody confuse you there are many people there are many men of god that are bullies they bully members with all kinds of prophetic 
prophetic messages and they get it very serious they say i saw a vision a cause was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit they were affected and everybody just runs around and say carry and give him please just give him less rest everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you are you getting what i'm saying i'll just leave it there so first fruit is very important as you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving you see that's why our work in the kingdom is by faith there are many people their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things so don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress there are certain laws he's practicing please are you getting me i don't want to go into so much detail i'm just giving you what we need here the last one that i'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know, men who communicated the counsel of God, be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that, because they ministered in the house of God perpetually. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things, other secular activities. Things have changed now. But they did not have that opportunity. Are you following me now? And so there were ordinances from God that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God. A true man of God to go and meet him just empty handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God. You don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael, listen, they wanted to, go, they were looking for, this was, um, this was, um, was it Hezekiah now? I believe. Whoever it was, the king. Praise God. <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand. And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying, shall I recover from this disease? The king told the man, don't go and meet a man of God empty handed. He said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor. Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac to enter, um, Isaac to now bless his sons. Is that true? The Bible says he told his son, go and make me venison. Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty-handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of God. First Samuel 9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then We'll wrap up for for today first samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13 this was the encounter and the asses of kish saul's father were lost so something was lost they needed a breakthrough in their life please listen i want to teach you a powerful principle there is still the law of seed faith we're coming there but i want to teach you one very powerful principle and they were lost so they needed a miracle and kish said to saul his son Take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go and look for the asses. Verse 4. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that. But they did not find it. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, and he said unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say, A man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. 
and he said let's go back our father will be worried he said no in this city there is a man of god there is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem he said let's go and meet him the word of the lord comes to to pass in his life he said peradventure he can show us our way that we should go verse 7 i want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient and that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings then said Saul to his servant but behold if we go what shall we bring to the man are you seeing now they knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of god just empty-handed to say we have come to meet you and and all of that he said for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of god what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered saul again and said behold i have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that i will give the man of god to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called saul an anointed saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today in our day is the concept of prophet offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet's offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you there will say mr man hold your thirty thousand. there are even those who have put their bill they have suffered enough they said look i won't be foolish again prophecy thirty thousand. this and that and that and it's working for certain people they may not be necessarily fake but i think it's inaccurate are you getting my point money and anointing does not mix together people are supposed to do things out of revelation however on your own part i never go and meet a man of god higher than me without nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what i'm sharing with you i will never go and meet a man of god higher than me even if he's just to greet even if he comes into a city there are men that i hear that just came into zaria for a program i'm not even related i'll package something maybe a tie or wine or something i'll say quickly take it to that man of god just tell them i went to i, I want to greet them or sometimes i can just put recharge card quickly one five or something is the law of honor i've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belt you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me it's, it's very bad it's dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you 
the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother he said law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this it's just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we had that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking it's very wrong very wrong no man honored a man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took up the venison it provoked a blessing from within him hallelujah i've shared with you my story on how i packaged a very dangerous seed and I left to Canaan land. Hallelujah. I went to go and honor God's servant here. I didn't get to meet with him. But I still went to practice that law of honor. And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I came out from there, praise God. When I came out from there, I was to enter the car. And the Holy Ghost told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down. I laid my hands there. He said, from today, every city you go, the heavens will be open to you. The same way you are seeing it there. So when you see a reproduction of certain things, understand that there are laws that work. There are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed. They just look, how are these people doing it? These guys, they must be fetish. That's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves. You were not there when we were praying the price. But you now see the reward and begin to criticize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. One of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life. There are bosses here. You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, why do you spend so much money on bosses? You don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses, chairs outside and the rest. Sometimes I come and I rebuke the protocol people and I tell them, why are there some people standing? Go and get more chairs. Hallelujah. And they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more. I say, still go and get it. It's the law of honor that i'm a man i don't know what grace you carry it's everybody sitting here you are a bank of grace it's a privilege that i'm standing here ministering to you i will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something many of you are product of different anointings some people have spoken certain blessings into your life as a ministry we are humble enough to tap into it and we tap into it by sowing into your life are you listening to me when we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry we looked at koza the commonwealth of zion assembly and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted we carried all the leaders all the heads of departments and the ministers and myself we went to abuja some of you were there we lodged in a very expensive hotel it cost us so much but it was the law of honor let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there. And they spoke to us. 
we have seen certain levels of excellence but when we came back we came with a spirit and an anointing many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of god you are not see the way many pastors suffer in many ministries god blesses you ministers are here suffering speaking over your life let me tell you if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials while you're sleeping we're awake the bible says he that ministers to you in spiritual things you should minister to the person in carnal things the carnal there doesn't mean fleshly make it a, a point a duty in your life that everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of god there practice the law of honor as much as possible please don't feel bad from today to say okay you are coming to greet me i don't have anything don't feel guilty at all are you getting me but i'm teaching you there are many people who don't have the means sincerely but i'm teaching you is a law begin to practice it hallelujah i'll never forget one time i went for a ministration in in a particular city i won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings and i was so humiliated pastor i felt so bad i said lord this is not fair when i went to that city where they kept me i was going to ask the people and say please where is a very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam, bam, bam. she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen i'm trying to communicate a point she brought this whole thing and i just sat down i greeted her she didn't even answer dropped everything and then she sped out I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with la casera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take la casera. Listen, I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him. You will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt i took it i gave thanks and honestly i was not offended praise god the next day nothing there was no breakfast they didn't ask whether i'm fasting or i want to eat later they just came they say we have come the car they carried me they chartered one car at least do something presentable are you getting my point it was hot it was horrible i was humiliated i said goodness what is this oh god i said well lord i'm, I'm, I'm i went and it was a great meeting god blessed all the people i paid my flight ticket from here to the place and i did everything when i finished by afternoon they brought all cross soup for me and something you know they just came and dropped it you know this this um this cooler this one that this small one that's what they just came and dropped and we have three or four pure water or something i said what is this i'm not exaggerating it was a humiliating experience and i spent three days there on the third day when i was done i was happy i laughed do you know what happened I, I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic praise the lord after this we'll rise up and pray this is what happened and when i got when I finished everything, the people came. They were all pinching themselves. I told them, please, I need to catch my flight. I, I had misery. I wanted to come back fast. Hallelujah. And then when it was time, the president just came. The envelope that they put the honorarium, you will know that it was not organized. One, you know envelope that they've written something, then you just strike it. I'm serious. And he carried it and packaged it. It was not up to even half of my flight ticket. He just brought it and said, sorry, you know that we are, we are starting, we are managing and all of that. And I just blessed him, blessed everything and sold it back into them. Not because I was angry. Imagine. 
if I had left everything and I came by faith are you getting me now that I came by faith and say I'm going to bless these people some of you do not know the pain there are many men of God that are bleeding there are many people that are punishing themselves investing in the house of God you forget that these people have lives are you getting my point now while you are sleeping they are praying for it's a different thing if they are not serious but where you see a man that is committed to your spiritual development let me tell you you rob yourself of certain dimensions if you do not bless them again if you don't believe this there is no problem but i'm teaching you a very powerful principle i always seek to give and not to take this is why you see certain people entering some strange order of blessings it works never invite a man of god you are not ready to honor his grace if you don't have the means be patient don't come and humiliate a man a man has a wife he has children he must pay the school fees of those people he's commit this is why a lot of men of god get into all kinds of manipulation because of the pain they are going through the, he now comes back home and the wife is saying honey well done no oh, three days i missed you how far no nothing for the super and the man says man god was glorified the wife said okay so when will we be glorified now we have glorified god hallelujah prophet's offering is real it exists next week we'll take it up from there rise up on your feet begin to pray and say lord thank you for your word our time is fast pen just bless the lord tell him lord we bless you lord we bless you lift your hands and give him praise thank you for your word the law of tithing your giving your offerings your kingdom investments the honor that you bring to the vessels that god blesses you pray and say lord the giving grace lift your voice and pray the giving grace let it man to me right now the giving grace that grace to give that grace to give, the grace to tithe, the grace to sow, the grace to commit myself in your house. Go ahead and pray. When you pray that prayer, no power in existence will stop you. I'm telling you, you're on your way to financial dominion. Pray. Yes, Lord, thank you. Many of you, is a mind shift that has happened to you tonight. I know our time is far spent but it's worth it because what you have received now no man can take away from you hallelujah in the next five minutes we're going to be praying in tongues all over this place and i tell you chains will just be breaking it's already happening at the back this road this very road the power of god is setting people free this road
Rapata bata 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 bata. Shete kete kete kete. Hasha. Hey, shapata bata. Whatever has held you bound must let you go tonight. Must let you go tonight. We insist in the spirit. Bata bata bata. Hallelujah. Whatever you came here with must let you go tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Lord, you will visit your people. This is the pool of Bethesda tonight. The pool of Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda. There is a stirring. I know when something has been stirred in the spirit. I know when there is a stirring. I tell you there is a mighty stirring. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. has just disappeared a lady has been healed right now right now check yourself a lump in the breast i don't mean reduced it has just disappeared just like that <laughs> hallelujah 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 there were things I planned to do, but right now something has been stirred up in the spirit. And let's just ride with it. Lift your hands. He has been made Lord above thrones, dominions, and every name that has been named. I'm about to challenge principalities and powers. The powers that has kept you bound. Many of us are under yokes and spells of darkness. I tell you as you shout that name we will invoke his presence there will be a mighty deliverance mighty deliverance everywhere inside and outside at the count of three listen goodness at the count of three you're going to shout that name many of our issues and problems are tied to demonic oppressions but as you shout that name the sword from the hand of Elohim will strike through your life and cause a separation between you and anything God has not planted. There will be mighty deliverances. I see mighty deliverances that will happen even outside. Are you ready? At the count of three, shout it with all your heart and there will be breaking of curses and yokes. Are you ready now? One. Two. 
two. Get ready, get ready. The fire of God is everywhere. Three. I command devils. Come out. Come out. Yokes be broken. Yokes be broken. Yokes be broken. Yokes be broken. I confront powers. I confront principalities. Activities of witchcraft by the fire of the Holy Ghost outside outside in the name of Jesus everyone under the influence of every power that is not of God I command those demons go 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 I give the chains falling falling I need the chains Falling, I hear the chain. I hear the chain. Falling, Lord, I hear. Falling, I hear the chain. I hear the chain. Falling, break chains. Break. That's the command in the spirit. Break chains, break. It must leave you tonight. Break chains, break. Break chains, break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Straight up, God is going to be breaking the chains of delayed marriage. Lift your hands, everybody. Delay. The Lord is instructing me to cause that spirit that came from all kinds of ancestral activities. Believe it or not, wickedness is real it has tied down many of us even maritally especially our families hallelujah you're going to shout that name jesus one more time and as you shout that name anyone under the sound of my voice whether you or your family members you may not even know that this may be an influence over your life but tonight in this pool of Bethesda, as you shout that name, my God will visit you and tear apart anything that is causing a delay. Lift your hands. Goodness, I see many ladies who will receive their deliverance right now. At the count of three, with the clash of the symbol alone. One, two, three. Jesus. Now I cause that spirit. I cause that spirit. Powers, powers of darkness, spirit husband, spirit wife, I curse you, I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost, I curse you, bring them out, I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost, release their marriages, Every spirit that you have been covenanted with, that is stopping you, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, bring them out. Gates of marriage be open. Gates of marriage be open. Gates of marriage. Be open. Gates of marriage that has been tied down. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. This is not all of it. Hallelujah. 
there must be a breaking right now it will happen some of you it may not be directly on your life but your family members the sword of judgment is coming upon altars of darkness that say you will not marry him lift your hands my god i thank you for the fire of the holy ghost when i count three shout that name that power must let you go that power must let you go i come tonight with an apostolic unction in the name of jesus hear my sound in the realm of the spirit that at the count of three let god's people go one two three let them go i command the release exodus exodus from this land of delay exodus i prophesy i decree i declare establish it they must go tonight they must go tonight they must go tonight Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, just lift your hands. Just this row, lift your hands. Because I see the angels of God standing. And I'm wondering why they are concentrated on this row. Listen, when I count three, I see the angels of God moving with cops but they have fire in them and they'll be pouring it on people it's still an aspect of deliverance at the count of three this will happen thank you my god one two three let the angels move right now let there be a movement a stirring a stirring a stirring a separation a stirring by the power the fire the power, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Rekete, I hear the chains falling, falling. I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, 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 break every chain. Shake it, para tapata. This is how you become mighty. You must learn to be sensitive. Don't get too organized that you do not know when God steps in. Don't get too mechanical. He knows you need to be healed. He knows you need Rema. But let me tell you, when he comes, he upgrades you. He upgrades you in the spirit. What is happening to us is a promotion in the spirit. Is how God increases the ranking of men in the spirit. ahead and pray in tongues let's just pray in tongues for a while come on men of prayer 
where you are just begin to pray so that that which you have received will sink into your mind activate that which you have received Promote us, O God. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the weight of your presence. Increase the weight of your glory upon our lives. We want to be envoys of your power. Envoys of your grace. Listen, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. It's not the name of a meeting. It's an experience. It's not a Sunday worship service. This is koinonia. All the men you see and admire, both around and in this ministry, this is how they were trained. This is how they were built. It's a spiritual drilling that will make you mighty is a spiritual drilling that will open you up to fountains of grace this is how your prayer for power will be answered this is prayer for spiritual influence will be answered just worship some more don't be tired Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, it's Your Majesty, Your Majesty, it's Your Majesty, it's Your Majesty. Obadiah Obadiah chapter 1 You are catching fire tonight Obadiah 1 Verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And as a result of their ministry, the kingdom shall be the Lord it says saviors shall come out saviors this strange pursuit of men and women this strange dimension of beings ordinary men doing the words of God men who are not limited by anything they have sustained a strategy in the spirit that keeps them victorious in the earth realm he said but time will not fail me to talk about Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms shut the mouth of lions he said women who received their dead back to life you are writing your own history 
your sacrifice is giving you access to touch what the ancient touched hallelujah hallelujah listen you see koinonia is is a collection of all kinds of people and god does not want to live anyone's life to chance some of you watching me you will be the ones doing what i'm doing one day you see that so god is preparing you if, except you don't want the anointing except you want to join the bands of liars and noisemakers but if it is true grace you want there is no shortcut to it I'm telling you this is how it happens this is how it happens hallelujah please be seated if you can be seated if you can don't worry just leave all those you can't sit just find somewhere sit on the floor just do whatever you want to do let me just establish a few things and then we will close I come against everything I come against every force and every foul spirit I know what I'm seeing in the spirit I come against every spirit I come against every spirit. I come against every spirit. I change every prophecy that lingers upon the head of anyone that is not of God. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood in the name that is above all names. I declare that the enchantment of men the wickedness of men the scourging tongues men who have sworn by the sky sworn by the stars and the constellations to manipulate the destinies of men i bring into alignment in the name of jesus i speak by an apostolic voice tonight i challenge the constellations and i command them to release the destinies of men the binary of the order of the heavens I command in the name of Jesus that every arrangement that has been sworn and has been as a result of that bringing men into failure, poverty, spiritual backwardness, I challenge those powers from the second heavens. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I open those gates. I open those doors. I open those dimensions. In the name of Jesus, things that have been manipulated, visions that have been corrupted, experiences that have been aberrated, I bring for purity to your dreams, to your visions, to your spiritual experiences. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be seated. Oh, she. Just be sensitive to what God is doing. It will be for a few minutes and we'll round up. There may not be room to do any serious teaching because I began to sense this right from home. I began to sense that it was tonight was a time of activations just activations and let me tell you it is very important for a ministry that as we begin to teach have miracle services there are services that are special impartation services this is one of such just impartations raw impartations of the spirit it is part of the ministry of the word look you need grace i'm telling you you need it you need the anointing I said it last week the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the anointing is the difference between failure and success the anointing is the difference between your current CGPA 
and where you need to get to the anointing is it you will struggle for nothing but the anointing so don't you think what is happening is just power to heal the sick the anointing is the difference between you and that joblessness the anointing when the principles have been taught and you understand the principles when your obedience has been perfected you need an agency that forces compliance in the spirit the name of that agency is the anointing we live in a wicked world where there are all kinds of assaults of darkness it is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies will submit themselves recurrent sicknesses it comes and goes comes and goes brother you need the anointing i tell you all kinds of manipulation of darkness in the dream eating all kinds of nonsense hearing all kinds of sounds the anointing does not make the difference it is please learn this it is the difference it is the difference you can do ministry listen to men of god and get their tapes and copy what they are saying you will never see the result until you pass through this process it is the anointing that gives life to your words it's not about speaking it's not just about rema you can hear what somebody said you can get a koinonia message preach word for word it will not produce the effect because the anointing how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about his academics he went about the business he went about the ministry the anointing is what will separate you marriage will not just come because you are beautiful no 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 the anointing it says because of the ointment do the virgins love thee because of the ointment not because of your looks sons of solomon he said because of the ointment there is an aura esther began to anoint herself with a kind of oil for one year and ahasuerus picked her as queen it is the anointing that is the difference they can call anybody for a job it is the anointing that separates you please respect the operation of the anointing don't let men just tell you that you will keep doing everything you are doing and it will never work until there is the anointing koinonia is nothing without the anointing you can print all the posters you can print all the banners you can but the anointing your life is grossly deficient and you see jesus was given the anointing without measure and we are all attaining there but it doesn't mean you have the anointing without measure it's not true i've had preachers preach that you have the anointing without it's not true brothers and sisters for there is a progression in the spirit and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he watched my response to that dimension of operation after a while he increased it again boundaries can be enlarged in the spirit all of us are not functioning at the same realm that's why you can do what everybody is doing but your results are different it is the anointing it is the anointing you can collect the mic with a beautiful voice and sing but it is the anointing he said they were caught to the heart as peter began to speak have you read the message in acts chapter 3 it's not the kind of message you preach in a crusade but the anointing made the difference i treasure the anointing and i treasure the custodian of that anointing that's why we honor the ministry of the spirit let me tell you when you are anointed you are anointed the worst that can happen is you can be criticized but no man can doubt the finger of god he said if it is bad no kingdom divided against itself will stand right he said if i by the finger of god do this the anointing please pray in one minute where you are and say lord let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life the anointing i don't know how else to teach you this you must desire the anointing
anointing will bring favor to your life i'm telling you in one day it will open doors of prosperity you never imagined you don't need to know nobody i'm telling you the anointing can bring peace to that family it can bring peace the anointing can bring peace hallelujah listen there are many of us we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing Samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when Delilah came Delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point Delilah had no business whether Samson was strong no 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 she said what is the source of your strength tell me that's all I want to know not when are you going to marry me not when will you take me to chicken republic I want to know how come you are a man who is so slim yet you remove gates yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things what is the secret and Samson kept it the anointing was hidden in his hair right according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing he fights the anointing he uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing blackmails to fight the anointing your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing because when you lose the anointing you've lost it all. and she shaved the head of samson samson the philistines are after you he got up they didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and Samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to Samson's life was the anointing when they went and Samson stood and began to ask God for mercy they kept Samson the anointing was being mocked by a dragon a God and they said you who has troubled the Philistines but Samson said oh Lord and while in minutes the hair began to grow they didn't know they didn't notice it they were dancing and when the hair came suddenly the anointing came brothers and sisters when the anointing is on your life the result is instant 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 the day you start preaching with the anointing everybody will know you don't need to tell everybody call me pastor they will call you ministers of our god when they see the anointing you don't need to tell anybody i'm a, I'm a great businessman let the anointing come the anointing please pray in one minute just do what i'm telling you to do say lord i need the anointing in my life i need the anointing in my life for those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing say lord increase my boundaries in the spirit <laughs> stretch the boundary so god in the spirit activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing let me lead by the anointing let me write that jam by the anointing let me write that wayek by the anointing let me write the exam by the anointing let me do my office activities by the anointing let me preach let me run this ministry by the anointing hallelujah hallelujah please sit down we have just about an hour or so and then we're done let me see how we can just 
touch whatever we can touch. We're supposed to start a new series tonight. And um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we're going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it. And um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We'll just do a two-part series, I think. We'll just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we touch. Then eventually we'll continue. Maybe by next month. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. We're taking a series called The Imagines. The Imagines. It's a series that seeks to reveal to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we're going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states. What, what is happening? These things are prophetic writings on the wall. And we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy. The emergence. So the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy. The prophecy that is upon God's people. The prophecy that is upon our nation. The prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers. Is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men. How men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy, the ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared on how to align ourselves. God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. Down the sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria. Darkness looms across the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. The pride of kings have been humbled in these seasons. Economies are melting down. Several things are happening across the territories of the nations. And God did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. He said, for behold, darkness covers the earth. And gross darkness, the people. That was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history. And this is that time when darkness is covering the earth. There are all kinds of perversions right the speakings of the beast the antichrist put as a system and as an entity i had a lot to talk about tonight but i hope that the emergence the occultic societies the freemasons the illuminatis these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities from the economy to the media to music watch this please but in this last day because 
the system of the antichrist also has its mode of operation are you getting my point now the system of the antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure not just a as a system and listen to me there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel going on in the nations right now genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the antichrist called nimrod the son of kush he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor god that city is being rebuilt again hallelujah the governmental policies that are being put the ideologies according to revelation 13 and when you read so on and so forth the speakings of the beast remember what john saw john said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what john saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talked like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination but let me tell you something it is it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy but in these days there is an open show of darkness it's no longer a hidden thing are you hearing what i'm saying it used to be a secret fraternity of the elite and so occasionally by divination they see through the vistas of time and they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems and so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation let me tell you something i've said it again and again i have an apostolic call i'm not a pastor and so i'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things no no listen i tell you the truth aside from the war between israel and the world every war that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system 
I remember the Bible calls certain classes of spirits rulers of darkness. That means their dominion is magnified when there is no light. They are not called rulers of light. Rulers of darkness. And so, they have controlled the economy of nations. They have controlled everything. Almost all the music artists that have been killed, right? All of those people you, you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life please listen to me i have seen many things i'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that but let me tell you on the strength of my secret place the Lord has shown me many things and one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil it's it they, they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch. We can manipulate technology. I thought we'll have time today. I would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you. Maybe next week we'll do that. Right? And you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of Babylon. Taking anything that looks like God out. There are two things that are of concern to me. Number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism. Let me explain to you what that means. Look up please. The teaching that every religion is an aspect of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is just different sides of seeing the same thing. Have you been taught that? So there are all kinds of Christian sects especially. Occultic sects branching out Sidio Christian sect and they have one mission to be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism that means it doesn't matter there are different ways to get to God rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of Acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when Paul entered the city, what happened? She started looking for the areas of similarity. He is fivefold, I am fivefold. He said, These are mighty men. Why? So that if Paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out, people will say, You are the friend of Paul. So we will listen to you. The system of darkness eating people up. I've said it again and again. I, I, I pray so much, especially for our little children who are growing because. The system was well designed. This is not something that started 10 years ago, 20 years, 100 years. No. It's a strategy by the devil. Right? They worked with demons to manufacture AIDS. They worked with demons to manufacture cancer. They worked with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? Hmm. And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money. They have acquired all the fame and everything and they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why, why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery that every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity 
music will precede that homage. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a, this is, I pray that you'll get what I'm saying. It was the custom of kings in ancient times. They would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples. And so they will now say, all hail the king. And there will be shofars that will be blown. Right? And at the sounding of that shofar, the entire nation will bow. If it was a graven image, they would do the same thing. Was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music will be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this god of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit to be able to raise a standard then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth at the same time coincidentally the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us Revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy. Did you know that Koinonia, you're coming here, they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book. We may never know you may not find a place in this book written Joshua Selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of God whether you believe it or not Jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself whether you believe it or not I'm announcing to you that Jesus is coming soon gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that but I am telling you Jesus is coming soon say amen it's coming soon but before his coming, he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world that the knowledge of evil, the rage of evil will increase. The fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season, as they are released from the pit of darkness, they come with fierce anger. The Bible says Satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short. There, is, there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a prophecy upon us. Over there, 121, we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion, the city, the place of God, the place where they have been built and trained and prepared, saviors shall arise. And he said they will judge the Mount of Esau, that rebellious entity, that system. The Antichrist system is called many things in the Bible. Jezebel, the dragon, Babylon, Egypt. They are all an expression of one and the same government. Running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her her you know her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ 
she began to talk about the coming revival i read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come i began to read about how she said that jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with jesus for like a year true genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say it one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revival is the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as god is working on us hallelujah when the lord began to show me this my eyes were opened and i said my goodness can you imagine first peter chapter 4 verse 12 please Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't, don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process, the mystery of the furnace of affliction. That furnace with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment. Please don't forget this. There is no champion. I said it, I think it was last week or the week before last. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No man of God just happens to be anointed by mistake. There's no such thing as that. No one just carries the glory of God by mistake. I want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power, to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit. To be a steward of God's finances. To be a steward of God's glory. To be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the furnace of affliction. You may not like what this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The furnace of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight, I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings are there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty, 
he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit i believe that absolutely i don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace but let me tell you there is no spiritual champion there is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the fullness of affliction you must understand this you don't have to pray against it there's nothing to bind there are you getting my point the only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says fear not i have redeemed you he said i have called you by name you are mine he said when you pass through the waters i will be with you he said through the river it shall not overwhelm you but he said when you walk through the fire not run to it when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned when you walk through the fire listen to me it's very important the way they make the anointing in israel they still do that i have i have i have anointing oil straight from israel with with mar spikenard and all of these things that were used ancient ingredients the, the, the spices that were originally used it smells the exact requirement the ingredients god gave i have i have a um, a bottle of, of of anointing oil like that and every time i just put a little of that on my hand i keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice the smell but then i studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone right and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive and as it crushes the olive it begins to squeeze out the oil are you hearing what i'm saying it is that way that god will make you become a man of true power afflictions are not there to kill us the fullness of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience. Jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned it. It was not an impartation. He learned obedience. There were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience. You will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default. There is an operation of the spirit. There are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from God's perspective. And if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace, you will run and allow the devil mock God in your presence. Say after me, God forbid. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about challenges that is that number one, affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something I have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of carelessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you are an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for god their tithing and giving and their committal to spiritual things it looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back it's like a a cycle of woes and pain i'm telling you this that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic 
it is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction this this teaching is not for babes it's not just receive receive it, because i'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life in spite of your prayer you hear god about everything but not that situation and god looks silent lord what is all this and it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others but for you you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer all the scriptures you had were about comfort i want you to know that there is a school you are passing through and what you are receiving is a lecture pay attention hallelujah moses did not know why he ran away and for 40 years there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a, is a pathway in the spirit. Is the route that leads you to Galatians 2.20. That realm called I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I live in the flesh that is the body. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. You come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last many of us have been taught if you pray about something and it does not happen you never had faith if you had faith it would have happened let me tell you i honor and i respect those teachings but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things are you getting what i'm saying not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith there are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith that's the reason why you are going through it I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart, you will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mbakeba Serija. 
No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the furnace of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds. It's not everything in life that happens with joy. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let any man fool you. There are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes. Tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief. Learn this. And Jesus wept. The Bible didn't say and he wept. He mentioned the name of the person who cried. And your Jesus wept. It's alright to cry and express pain. You get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you. There are times that lack of finances will eat you up. And you stand and you are saying, I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed. But I love God and I stay. But the truth is, the reality at the moment is that there is no food. It's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening. There's nobody that is sending you money anywhere. The furnace of affliction. The place where mighty men are made. That's, that's where reformers emerge. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed there. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he hid there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal dung. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching. But this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah. Mysteriously at a point in my life, I've shared my story. When I was diagnosed with a fungal infection. I prayed every prayer I know how to pray. Let me tell you. If you say I didn't have faith, you are joking. I had the, the whole faith in the world. They took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital. Took samples of my head. I became an object of experiment. In that darkness, I began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly... It was... They couldn't find out what was wrong. That's the painful part. I've shared with you the story. My mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you use to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they're looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it. Somebody just says, are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh? They carry your money and go. And they say, there's no food. And you say, Lord, I give you glory. You sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep. You and the fire have become one. The Bible says you walk through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you. And there is nothing to fear again. The fear of lack of membership happened. The fear of lack of money happened. The fear of the carryover happened. At the end of it, when you say, God, you are faithful, there is no strings attached. 
You suspected the relationship could break. Yes, it broke. But in all, you have learned to be strong. Look, let me tell you. That, that's the secret of courage. You see some men go as if the devil, even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again. Because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch. Satan, Satan is not a fool. I've taught you this. He will touch your finances and see your reaction. If you do audition, he won't touch it again. Because it means it doesn't matter to you. Then he will touch your health. There is an aspect of your life you will touch. The way you will react, the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say, I found it. I found it. For many of us, every part he touches, you shout. And so God says, no, you are a babe. You may be the president of your ministry, but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead. A dead man doesn't have feelings again. So they just call you and say, Mr. Man, your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh. You say, please, can I, can we continue what we are discussing? And people say, it's like you didn't hear me. Your 2.5 million car just crashed. You say, Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. The fondness of affliction has done something to you. You are not a pure human being again. Something spiritual has altered your humanity. It has made you strong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Absolutely. This is the kind of fondness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children. They say, Madam, your child just died. And they look and tears are coming out of their eyes. And they are saying, Lord, you are faithful. When is the burial date? And you are saying, what sort of insensitive person? No, 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 no. The opposite of what I'm telling you is excessive emotionalism. And that's what the, the system of darkness is doing. So people send every picture on Facebook and Twitter. You are angry. You, you snap yourself and say, I'm angry. And then five minutes later, you eat and say, now yam has come. You see, that, that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction. There is a way you are built. They look at you and they say, after next week, they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh. Say, My God is faithful. You become unperturbed. You are not touched by anything. May God take us to that realm. If you don't get to that realm, worry alone will kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not get to that realm, I guarantee you, worry will kill you. Have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die? Have you seen people like that? They just sit down, bring me a stool and they sit down and die. A man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself right and put the rope from under up and hang himself ready go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree the fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man please hear me it makes you a true spiritual man if you have never cried you have not gone through the fullness of affliction i guarantee you you have been passing through AC and the rest. The fullness of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going through a fullness of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation, no honorarium. Right? At that time, you come to your fellowship and you find three people. Your sister, your uncle, the other guy who is coming to beg you. Those are the three people that are around. Yet, you are making tremendous progress in the spirit. And you do not understand. The fullness of affliction. You stand to preach the generator spoils. Everything scatters. Your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where 
you just play songs you play hymns and you just sit down everything remember all those country music this world is not my home you just sit down people say why you are, i mean life doesn't make sense hear me don't just laugh it's the fullness of affliction don't think it's happening because of lack of faith if no one has taught you rejoice when you are going through those things because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief god taught me this god taught me i didn't read it in any book god himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit no matter how anointed you are i give you a guarantee under the name of the lord jesus christ you must pass through that school for you to be an approved man that badge you don't buy it you don't bribe your way through it the badge is a scar a scar is a sign that your wound has healed it's also a sign that there was once a wound let no man trouble me for i bear i went through it don't think I dropped the classes in the spirit. I went to it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it oh. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you, and I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. It's is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy i came out held my bible and i started praying in tongues let me tell you i said i'm going there i was praying i said lord i pass through it with joy a day will come people will hear me when i got there to make matters worse it was stiff strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in when i got to the church they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down there was no seat when i got there they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing and then after everything they whispered to me that please i have 15 minutes i should think of how to patch the time so that i can i can i can be snappy about it it's called the fullness of affliction three days fasting not not nonsense fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for it's called the fullness of affliction Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I would join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside 
I entered inside the tavoli. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became, I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody's even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh-uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can we can come in and pretend as it is. All those, all those things. People use those strategies and they compromise. Hallelujah. They compromise. Say, I will not compromise. Say one more time, I will not compromise. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time. I remember the day I got one proper honorarium. I mean proper. You know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry. That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sew it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened. Brothers and sisters, don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish. There is a dealing of the spirit. Hallelujah. Come, sweetheart, come. Let me tell you, come on, come on, come quickly. Let me tell you something about this lady. This lady is a graduate of banking and finance. Are you seeing this? She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with, this, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo. Praise the Lord. Banking and finance with even French again. Yet, for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit. Let's, let me tell you, if you want to be like everybody, you will suffer like everybody. If you are afraid of being different because of what, you just try to be different, the accusations are fierce. Everybody will say, we are not doing it like this. So don't be a stupid person. Wisdom is profitable to direct. When God is telling you, go left. All prophets, like the ones in the Bible, would say, go right. It's always been right. God will say, you, go left. It's a lonely road. But it's the fullness of affliction. God is speaking to some of us here. There are some of us seated here, inside and outside. You trekked from your house or from your, whatever, your office or from school to come here. And if you don't get boss, you are trekking back. Don't complain. See it as the school. There is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit. Pay attention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no money coming from anywhere. Brother, if there is no money, relax. Get a cup of water and drink and smile. And know that the world will celebrate you. There is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me. I'm only grateful about it. Hallelujah. Sister, when God is done with you, then you will know why he trained you. When you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting, you will know why your training was different. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to? Many of us are seated here, although we are smiling. Please play my notes. Listen. We are smiling 
but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when I sat down and I prayed with this lady while I was praying with her her bond hands she held my hands and as she was crying I could see these ladies you, you could sense what she was saying I'm not giving up Lord you are faithful when I finished praying she said I should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we were going and she was walking Tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds. When she sees people with wheelchairs, the school she passed through created a memory. And that memory brings the anointing. That's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services. I've gone through some pain enough in my life. We say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched. When was he touched? During the furnace of affliction. There are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members. They don't know what is happening, so they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to be there. I've suffered hunger. There are times that people come to meet me and say, Apostle, as I am like this, I've not eaten. And I look and I say, I understand. No matter what it is, don't give up. They are trying to fight tears in their eyes. I say, don't give up. Don't be afraid. I told you crying is allowed. In the furnace of affliction, crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves Every one naira comes by faith. I speak a word to you. Don't you think God has rejected you? You are passing through what will make you a principality in your time. That's how great men are made. I fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast. But I knew God was faithful. Hallelujah. God. That's why today, if you like, bring, bring, Bring a bottle of drink that is one million and give me. I'll drink it, drop it, and continue what I'm doing. Because I've passed through a furnace of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Affliction. It makes you to love people. I went through things in my life I would never want anybody to go through. It creates the true spirit of love. This army are men and women that for now, let me tell you, all over the earth, they are not manifesting yet, brothers and sisters. Many of them are still passing through the furnace of affliction. Some of you, it was your pain and tears that brought you to Koinonia. There is, there is an evil in your family waiting. And you are the one who is trying to emerge. And you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance. The devil is, is making them walk against you. Is that true? Some of you, after this koinonia, you are going back home. And the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, is with a slap, they welcome you. They say, you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap or realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? A reformer is on his way. There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I didn't, God says, that's not, get up, go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. 
there are times God will carry tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy it's a fullness of affliction it's a place of beauty are you hearing what I'm saying you have the capacity to wax an album you are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own you are on your own with that album he said instead carry the money and go and sow it to somebody and remain ha. I wish what I was saying were a lie but it's true you will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do. All of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using crown, not oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil. To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great? The fullness of affliction is your passport. This message may not be pleasant. It's a series we're taking. It's called the emergence. We're looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the fullness of affliction where men are made it is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again it is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent it is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day it comes to a point where as the mountains surround jerusalem that's how everything has surrounded you where you are praying for something to be better another thing comes up the Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. Lightning came and scattered his building. Then he was told that he still one report after the other. And Job just sat on the ground. He said, naked I came. And he began to speak a lot of things. Let me tell you something. The fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again. Your silence becomes your prayer. And God hears it. Because that is the time you will be talking the loudest. You sit down. You can't open your mouth to say God is unfaithful. But to say God is faithful becomes difficult. And it's not a sign of unbelief. Hallelujah. That's the point. Where everything in your life does not seem to work. Yet you are making spiritual progress. Yet you are growing spiritually. You are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of. You lay hands on them and the power of God gets them free. But you have prayed and fasted for months. And this thing does not go. I bring you a matured message to the body of Christ. There is a making of reformers across the entire earth. These men, their dealings look harsh. But my brothers, let me tell you something. Do you know how the eagle trains the eaglets to, to, to fly? It picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars when other birds are moving around the eaglets when I was an eaglet I went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says I will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many 
in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from port Harcourt, right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious bus you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he will be the prime minister probably he now said oh lord let me be in this prison for five more years five years is enough for me not knowing that that was the last night he would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years but that night he was at the entrance of another realm leaving the furnace of affliction forever hallelujah i've shared with you how the lord instructed me to trek from that place near chicken republic till aviation I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say, I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? He said, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claims God is calling him. Your father has enough, my daughter. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you, I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else right and that's what you need a human being plus an anointing a human being plus a grace we're going to pray hallelujah let me stop here because of our time the making the making there is a making brothers and sisters there are many of us who have been bereaved there are some of us a lot has happened to you there are some of us what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west i bring you a word it is a furnace of affliction if it has an entrance it has an exit you may walk through it so slow but the day you will come out you it will be without information you will you will step into an anointing you will never recover from you will step into a level of grace you will never recover from the day jesus appeared to me i was not prepared for that visitor i just loved him i wanted him with my life and then he appeared to me i perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction they have lasted years you have done let me tell you when that season comes to an end you don't need connection everything works for you including your enemies it's a sign that that season has ended and so god stamps it upon your life jesus died and was in the grave all of a sudden while they were discussing his death jesus the christ he got up he was on his way to m house and two people were saying have you had ah this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples so jesus died and the man said really he died brothers and sisters but he only died for three days what you are passing through will not kill you if he would have killed you you would have died since this is how you know it's a furnace of affliction because in it you never die you go through everything that can kill you but when all the dust settles you are still standing this is a message for you to preach to some of our parents they have done their best some of you right now you are the ones feeding your families although you are students it's you that sends money mommy take 2k and your mother is saying lord when will you change our story tell her mommy there is a reform arising in this house that is the reason like the blood that was put there is a mark that is upon this family as, as, as we are sitting there are mega ministries that are rising but listen it will not rise by claiming your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar that's what will make your altar sacred that's what will make your anointing uncommon it is good to receive impartations but in the furnace of affliction you dig your own well by yourself you 
dig that well until you find the water. We are going to pray. There is nothing that you are passing through that is forever. I want you to know this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through it, you will know that God is a miracle worker. When you pass through it, you will know that God is mighty. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. This is how the reformers will emerge. The first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction. You will pass through pain. You will pass through rejection. You will pass through criticism. They will misunderstand you. You don't need to defend yourself. You will pass through all kinds of things. The Bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing. When you pass through fiery trials. Lift your voice and begin to pray koinonia. Everyone pray. I draw strength. I draw strength from the journey ahead. I draw strength for the journey ahead. Pray. I draw strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I draw strength for the days of criticisms. I draw strength for the days of weaknesses. The days when there is no result in my life. The days when there is no result in my church. The days when there is no result in my career. I draw strength to face the carryovers that I have. I draw strength to face the mockery. I draw strength to face this pain, this sickness in my body. I've been married for five years. No child. I draw strength. Go ahead and pray. He said, and Elijah went in the strength of that bread. 40 days journey. And Elijah went in the strength of that bread. Pray. Pray. I draw strength for my family they may be persecuted my father has lost his job mother lost her job but I draw strength the storms do not come to kill me they come to make a reformer out of me I am part of the program of God I am part of the program of God I may cry for now I may weep for now I may not have a helper but I lift my eyes onto the hill from whence cometh my help I may pass through the fire it will prune me it will discipline me it will teach me obedience but in the name of Jesus I will not give up hallelujah prayer point number two make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer I will not give up the sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given that mantle that anointing for your ministry for your business pass through it lift your voice and pray I'm not giving up I'm not giving up no matter what happens I may cry but I will not give up I may weep there is an anointed man rising from this pain out of these ashes out of these ashes there is a general a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain the reward for the scar the reward for the crying is a new sword he will give you a sword in the spirit you will do great business for the kingdom therefore arise pass through it I bring you a prophetic word pass through it 
it will not kill you the storms will rise the storms will rise you will fall and not pass through it you will cry many times pass through it you will endure you will endure hardship you will endure hunger pass through it I won't give up I refuse to give up there is a reformer there is a principality there is an anointing coming out through my pain there is an anointing Tory I'm writing history Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God. Some of you are crying. Don't let it embarrass you. You are going to say, Lord, through the pain, I say to the heavens, you are faithful. I've been mocked, but you are faithful. I saw the carryover. But my God, you are faithful. They called me a failure. They sacked me from the job. But Lord, you are faithful. He said he will marry me. After introduction, he talked me. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. I lost my brother through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my father through the pain. You are faithful. I lost my pain. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me trouble. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me pain. You are faithful. You are faithful. My integrity has brought me a carryover. You are still faithful. My integrity ministry has relegated me to the background you are faithful for i will like an edifice though he slay me yet will i praise him and all the days of my time i will wait but i will wait i will be misunderstood but i will wait when all is said and done the purposes of the kingdom will be planted through me Hallelujah. We have one minute. I'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother. You may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up. I'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit. I speak to you. You saw your results yesterday. Seven carryovers. You don't know where you will start from but i speak strength from the throne they threw you away from the job and they said what you study cannot give you a living your ministry seems to have died no one is recognizing your grace but i speak strength speak strength prophesy strength don't give up I release strength upon you you can't give up at this time you have gone through too much you have gone through too much you are already getting to the end don't give up I supply spirit power I supply strength from the throne in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 now look at me very quickly I want to pray specially and I just want you to indicate by lifting your hands you don't need to come out here there are people who came tonight and all you came to do is to receive strength you have come to the end of your road please not everybody I just want you to lift your hands as I minister to you things have happened you had news in your family 
humanly speaking there's no strength to continue this thing has worried you you can't even pray again you have prayed every prayer you know how to pray in the name of the lord jesus receive a supply of the strength of the spirit i speak to you you are coming out of this you are coming out generals before you have passed through it they didn't die you will not die in it your redeemer still lives he may look silent but he will speak he may look silent but he's preparing a table before you you may not have money in your pocket but i want you to know that you shouldn't compromise the hand of your god is coming for you in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families here represented who have come to the end of the road you have done all you know to do and nothing seems to be working i want to announce to you that there is prophecy at work in your life there is the making of a reformer it's part of the birthing process zion does not give birth without traveling he said as soon as zion travels there is a there is there is a a, a labor pain in the spirit and it's because of what is about to be birthed in your life pass through the pain like a woman passes through the pain it may last for hours for some women it may last for days others it may even require surgery but make sure the baby is not lost make sure you keep it because that baby represents your prophetic destiny keep that vision cry but keep the vision in the mighty name of jesus christ lift your hands and begin to thank god for his word hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now keep standing those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time please let's not distract because i still want to prophesy a blessing to us before we go if this is your first time please find your way to the front find your way to the front if this is your first time koinonia celebrate them what a time to come god brought you to hear something that will set you on fire keep coming celebrate one more time all our visitors thank you so much for coming praise the lord thank you so much for coming i want you to know that your steps were ordered by the lord because the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord hallelujah this is koinonia the lord brought you to bless you and to lift you you will never be the same i assure you in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray for you and I want you to receive every part of this prayer because it will speak in your life. Stretch your hands, saints of God, prophesy in one minute. We bless you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. Whatever you are trusting God for, we pray that the Lord grant it unto you. May you become mighty men and women of fire, women of prophecy, men and women of grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we plant a hunger for spiritual things in your heart. You will keep loving the Lord and going from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Now I want you to just follow the gentleman waving his hands. You will have your details and they will welcome you more warmly on our behalf. God bless you this way. Just make your way. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them, please. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Don't 
the face of development. Lord, grant me the...